no uh, <clears throat> we come to a very juicy part of the hyper dvg debugger and it's, it's a stepping mechanism hyper dvg uses different methods for a stepping mechanism it's it's really interesting uh, we have three types of in the current version of hyper dvg we have three types of stepping the first one is a stepping which is a regular stepping i will explain it in details later uh, we have a step over and a new thing and a unique feature of hyper dvg is uh, is its uh, in instrumentation a stepping which is a guaranteed uh, a stepping i will uh, explain each of them in details uh, the regular uh, stepping command, which is implemented as t command, uh, is uh, exactly like uh, what what is uh, implemented in WinDBG and uh, also other classic debuggers. As you can see in the picture, if if we are currently stepping through these instructions or instrumenting these instructions. Uh, the debugger program uh, first executes uh, this move uh, rex 0 x uh, one 5 and then the next instruction. It works like this. It sets the R flag registers, the trap flag, and uh, after each of them, uh, uh, exception is thrown and an exception is handled through the exception bitmap of the VMCS. Uh, don't worry about these details. I will... If you're just not interested in the details, I just want to explain it here. But if you're not really interested uh, in the details, you can skip and see the slide related to the instrumentation stepping. It's just, I just want to show how it works. Uh, by setting an exception bitmap VMX seed, uh, you can just, uh, after each instruction, uh, exception is thrown and is handled by hybrid rigid. So you can, uh, think about it that uh, before each instructions you can uh, definitely run uh, anything else because everything uh, like other debuggers like WinDBG every other course and processes are continued and whenever uh, a, or program finds a chance to get executed again and uh, a TF is triggered TF uh, is triggered after running the instruction we will be notified again but there are other processes in other cores and uh, also in our current core that uh, might get a chance to get executed uh, so this method doesn't guarantee that nothing happens in the system this is exactly like other debuggers for example if you see a syscall or instruction or system call instruction in the user mode you can easily skip it like uh, executing uh, t and uh, after executing the syscall it goes to the instruction after syscall in the user mode and nothing happens just like syscall is handled in the kernel and nothing happened in the just see a simple step in. the same is uh, true about p uh, or p command uh, which stands for a step over uh, the only different thing uh, from uh, this instruction and the t command is that if it sees a call instruction then it tries to put a hardware breakpoint there and uh, continues the debugging until the hardware uh, breakpoint is triggered so it just steps over the call instructions the, 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 this is really interesting uh and i think as as, as i mentioned which is unique to the hyper dvg is uh, its instrumentation as dipping or uh, i command uh, this command uh, <clears throat> is completely a hypervisor based command as it's uh, implemented by using the monitor trap flag uh, feature of the uh, <coughs> Intel VTX uh, and it's somehow transparent. The MTF itself is transparent from the OS. So what is uh, MTF? Uh, MTF uh, is a feature in the Intel, is a bit actually. Whenever you set an MTF and continue the debugging or the guess, the guest will uh, uh, will execute one instruction and after an instruction a vm exit happens uh, so uh, we will handle it uh, handle the next instruction by using uh, mtf it's a, exactly a, something exactly like the trap flag in a regular uh, executing environment 
but this is a trap flag uh, for the hypervisor this uh, implementation uh, as 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 you can imagine that is transparent from the user mode applications or from the operating system itself and hyperdbg guarantees that no other course and other processes or threads get a chance to be executed it guarantees that only one instruction from the target thread get executed uh, you can think about it again uh, it's really helpful in debugging for example there are two threads in two different process in two different processes or same processes that are uh, we'll monitor each other to see whether uh, they are uh, working or not, or whether uh, they are uh, operating or not. And some of the anti-debugging methods use this method to, for example, detect that one de one thread is debugging, and so another thread tries to kill that uh, kill those debugger or that thread or behave differently or something like this. But in this scenario, HyperDBG just guarantees that nothing happens to your system only one instruction from one process uh, and one thread uh, and other cores are also keep uh, kept in a halt set uh, form another really interesting thing about uh, this uh, instrumentation as the pin is that uh, it uh, works a bridge uh, to the kernel and user for example you can step through the instructions from the user mode to the kernel mode and it's a really uh, useful module for reverse engineering binaries. For example, you want to know how a specific function or how a specific system call works in a system uh, in the Windows system. You just prepare everything in the user mode uh, and uh, just uh, ex execute uh, just trigger a breakpoint and after that execute uh, a step through the instructions to find what are what are the exact functions that are uh, responsible for supporting that special system call this is how it works and also it's able to return from a system call for example you will uh, end up executing uh, your system call and know you want to step through the instructions until you reach to the user mode again for example after a sysret instruction uh, the processor will return from the kernel to user mode and you can just continue a stepping need continue running the step uh, sys instruction uh, it's also true about the syscall uh, whenever you want to go from the user mode to the kernel mode you will execute a syscall or uh, for example an exception happens and it just continues its normal execution i have a i made a very small program ju that just tries to uh shows a very simple uh string and std output like uh, a print app hyper dvg debug test one and hyper dvg debug test two uh, it just executes a single breakpoint uh, in a debug uh, form it, the, after running uh, this uh, line of code uh, a breakpoint is triggered so we, we will be notified and after that we can instrument through the instructions to reach to a point where printf is executed so i try to compile it and i will return back to my debuggy uh here it is uh copy and paste it on my market debuggy okay uh the hyperdvg is running in the in this uh, guest system and uh it's uh, also as there's a breakpoint here hyperdvg will definitely notice about this breakpoint and probably halt and definitely halt everything yes i just executed uh, this uh, application and as you can see everything is halted actually the uh, application starts working on the back back side of the system and it, as you can see we, we can't see it, it it, it's not appeared yet on a screen but the hyper is notified about it 
so uh, if I put that process here, you can see that we are currently running the console applica. Uh, it, it, this uh, field is uh, limited to uh, 16 bytes and the e-process is located here and the process ID is here. So I can just continue normal execution like putting a T by stepping through the installation by using the T command. Uh, or uh, executing I command and uh, running it by using the instrumentation as typing. For example, I put, uh, you can specify the number of times that you want to uh, execute uh, uh, the stepping instructions. I will put maybe let's say 300 and starts executing and instrumenting the instructions. We are currently in the user mode because uh, as you can see, the address is the start with 007FF and this is the user mode address based on address sanity uh, of the Intel processors. And we keep waiting until we reach to a point where we go to the kernel mode uh, from the user mode and we will investigate that point. You can also, uh, whenever you want, you can press Control uh, plus C to stop this uh, stopping mechanism if you think that uh, your target uh, needs to be stopped or you made a very big number for your stopping or things like this. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just stop it. As you can see, we, uh, we go through the kernel mode routines, and here's uh, where uh, the user mode stopped uh, executions or uh, a system call happens. We can see that the last instruction before entering the kernel mode is the system call here. There are also other instructions here that executed before the system call. Uh, we can see that it moves EAX or the system call number 0x8. So it's uh, a system call which is number is uh, 0x08. Uh, eight system call. And after that, you can see that it starts running NTKI system call 64 and it starts with a swap JS instructions and other instructions that are related to making uh, making the system available for the debugging or for handling the system call so uh, you can imagine that uh, there are also other instructions that are here that are related to my system before making the system available and you can see that there are different functions that are calling here this is simply not possible by any other debuggers because uh, they won't instrument from the user mode to the kernel mode so you can trace your execution. Uh, also, if you know about the heaven's gate mechanism, it's also possible to easily investigate the he heaven gates mechanism. It, currently, it is a 64-bit uh, uh, application, so it's not a 32-bit application to investigate the heaven gates, but if you have a 32-bit applications, you can also investigate the way that Windows tries to emulate or run a 32-bit application in a 64-bit operating system and uh, have a research about it. Also, HyperDVG tells you that this is the user mode, the kernel mode. Uh, 
transfer. Uh, Hypergrid also have uh, the ability to tell you that currently it's running on a, a, a heaven gates or a return from a heaven gate, <laughs> or it, it will uh, notify you about these different uh, situations where <laughs> you're currently running. 